Uh, so welcome to the last uh, track speaker here for track three for Friday. Uh, we've got uh, Gregory Pickett uh, going into breaking the back end. So here you go, Greg. All right, it's breaking the back end, DEF CON 27, I got the number right, all right, long day. My name is, uh, as you said, Gregor Pickett with Hellfire Security with the Cybersecurity Operations Group. Our talk today, all right, our, the transit system, our target, reverse engineering the target, all right, the discoveries that I made reverse engineering it. Then, of course, the exploit that I developed with what I discovered. And, of course, the lessons to be learned. Always lessons. Without the lessons, what's the point, right? All right, how is this different? We aren't sneaking into the station. We aren't hacking their terminals. We aren't social engineering anyone. We're hacking the wire to wireless network. It's not about the hardware. We aren't going to be breaking any, any encryption. We aren't going to be cloning mag stripes or NFC cards. Instead, this is about flaws in application logic. Right, there is some cloning involved, but it is not the vulnerability exploited. Instead, we're using AppSec to attack a complex, multi layered, real world solution. Our target, the elevated train, is the Bangkok Mass Transit System. It's the elevated uh, train in Bangkok, Thailand. Serves the greater Bangkok area. Think of the time that I started this, 43 stations along two lines, but I believe there are more now and actually more being added uh, as we speak. Yeah. That transit system uses uh, two different types of tickets store value card using NFC and then an all day pass in a single journey using a mag stripe. It's the uh, mag stripe that we're going to look at. Those uh, tickets have two mag stripes. There is a hole through one of the mag stripes and it is only 0 0.27 millimeters thick. A uh, picture there. The top is the single journey ticket. The bottom is the all day pass, you can get the mouse over there. You can see the little hole right there. Okay. You see how thin it is? You are not going to be opening up a catalog and ordering it. You aren't going to be able to go down to the store and ask for it. Right. Of course, the first thing you're going to do is read it. All right, the equipment there. Standard reader, writer, manufactured in China before the tariff, so. Not quite as expensive as it could have been. Standards or raw read, right? So it would, of course, take the data and then decode it according to uh, standards or just dump the data uh, in a raw read. Errors were rare. It was able to handle that hole, which I originally thought was a 1980s style copy protection. If you aren't familiar with, with that, uh, they used to damage a sector on the disk. So if you attempted to copy, it would error out, error out. And of course, you then couldn't copy it and pass on the copy to your friend. Turns out that hole is just to make sure that the, the ticket is properly lined, right? F turned up the right direction and facing the, the right direction, right? So it would be go into the feeder properly. And then it was reliable performance. If you're going to start analyzing any data, you want to make sure that the data is reliable, otherwise, you, well, you just can't perform that analysis. It's not, re it's not reliable. Okay. First thing you do is sit down in a lab and you attempt to decode this according to the standards. Using uh, the International Organization for Standardization. Uh, there's a lot there actually, but it boils down to six bit uh, and four bit character sets, some with parity and some without. I attempted to code this both forwards and backwards. I am a perfectionist, uh, somewhat anal retentive, I think was the term they used to use. So I'm going over and over again to make sure that not only is the software not making um, a mistake, but I'm not making a mistake because I did do it with uh, the, the software and I also then would do it manually. So I finally decided after doing this again and again and again that it wasn't using the standards. And uh, maybe it's not encoded at all, right? Maybe it's just raw data. So we'll see. Okay. So looking at uh, the data, it's not encrypted. There are sections that repeat. If it's repeating, it's not encrypted. 
no parity checks. If you break up the bits, you calculate parity, and then you check the ticket to see if it's represented uh, that way there on the ticket. It's not, so no, uh, no CRCs, no LRCs, and no timestamps. If you buy a ticket and you wait 10 seconds, nothing increments by 10. So I think after this we can say that it is just raw data. But what does that data mean? Right? Well, that's the field work. You run that ticket through the system, you're going to vary the input each time, and then you're going to see how the data changes. It's going to, you know, use those changes to identify the meaning. Okay. Now, before you do that analysis, you want to try to reduce your workload, right? The less work you have to do, the better. So I talked about duplication or duplicated sections. The yellow sections up there were essentially duplicated. You didn't need to look at them then, you just dumped them out. There were sections that uh, had a utilitarian use. This data actually sits in zeros, right? It gives the uh, ticket a chance to line up properly in the reader. And right? so there's basically a delay with those zeros. Well, that's a start sentinel, or functions as a start sentinel. It's a single bit saying data is now coming. So I don't really need to analyze that. I knew it just by looking at it. That's another benefit of going over the data again and again earlier is that you have some insights later on. The 7826, which is the red, uh, you can't see that probably very well. When I was buying tickets and taking a look at them, I would have a one particular value for the single journey, and then I'd have a different value for the all-day pass, so it's quite obvious at that point in time that that's a ticket type. This here, this little, these two little, uh, these two nibbles there, end up being 100 plus the ticket price. Okay, so all that jumped out at me. I don't really need to do any deeper analysis on that. That leaves me with four sections. This one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. So that's a lot less work. Now, each of these, of course, is different from ticket to ticket. It's important to note also that this here, and you probably can't tell that, but it's blue, uh, that it actually changes as the ticket is used, as it goes through the system. So after I observed those changes, this is what I found. Each ticket has a GUID associated with it and a location. Initially, it's in a dispenser, and there's a GUID associated with its arrival there. When the ticket moves, the location is updated to a turnstile. There it is. Uh, and a GUID associated with its arrival there. When the ticket moves, it also changes state. It goes from issued to used to collected. When you buy it, it comes out of that dispenser. It's in the issued state. You go ahead and use it to enter. It goes through the turnstile. It's now in the used state. Then when you exit, right, it gets captured by the, the turnstile, and it's then in the collected state. Okay. There are also some handling rules. To enter, the ticket must have previously been in the collected state, meaning it was just sitting in a turnstile somewhere, previously in the collected state, coming out of the dispenser now, currently in an issued state. Right, if that's what the object uh, was, where it was, and where it is now, then of course you can use it to enter. To exit, the ticket now must be in the used state. Okay. So we're going to look to exploit this system. We're going to cover briefly, you know, what we've learned so far, kind of summarize everything up, talk about uh, system safeguards that become evident as you examine the system, the assumptions that they must have had uh, when putting together these safeguards, and then we'll talk about attacks against the, uh, their assumptions, and then, of course, obviously, this is why I'm here, there was an epic fail there. We don't have regular fails here at DEF CON, we have epic fails. All right, so uh, what we've learned so far, it's an object-based system. Uh, it's a physical object and a database object. I know this one because, uh, well, I primarily you go ahead and try to modify any of the data on the ticket, and the little screen at the turnstile says, go to the office. It's like you know, school. You do something wrong and you go to the office. Uh, now, I knew it was, there was a database representation, all right, a database object, because there was no integrity checking on that ticket. So there had to be an external reference, and it's typically a database. And each of these objects, right, whether it's a physical object or the database object, uh, has properties. There's identification, there's a type, a value, and a location. Okay. 
So they're actually rather different uh, than most systems that are transaction based. This is more of an object based. Okay. Alright, so and these objects also have states uh, issued, used, collected, and a history. Okay. Now there's some system safeguards that become evident ticket composition and ticket design. There was a mirrored physical object and a database object. There were handling rules. And there's a life cycle, right? It was only good for 24 hours, basically. And this ticket would be collected after you used it. Right? There are assumptions in using these particular safeguards is that no one, right, no one will be able to reproduce their ticket. And their system has the only valid objects. Right? Handling rules will prevent concurrent use, so I can't hand this to my buddy. Right? I go through and then hand it back to someone. No one can do that. If that was their assumption. Uh, damage is limited to life cycle, right? So if somehow someone is able to bypass these safeguards, well, what damage could they do in 24 hours? And finally, after the use, the ticket will be in their possession, right? You have in your possession, now you feel safe. Attacks against those assumptions. First one, right, acquire a suitable ticket. They say or they believe that they, no one else can make these tickets, let's find out that's true. Capture a valid object. Bypass those handling rules and then uh, extend the attack to increase the damage. Right? Get beyond that 24 hour, it's probably a little shorter than that, window. There was indeed an epic fail there. I did find someone to make blank tickets. It took me a really long time. Most companies said you couldn't do it, but I was persistent. Uh, I also had Alibaba. Anyone out here ever use Alibaba? Familiar with it? Yeah, it's great, right? Um, and then I did copy a shit ton <laughs> of the objects. And I feel comfortable to say that here, shit ton, um, in the issued state. And then I just found a flaw in the handling rules. Right? What I found was the collected state found in a current life cycle overrides all other states. Right? So the object is always seen as recently collected. You run that original ticket through, that recently, that, uh, that, that recently collected gets stuck in there. So it doesn't matter if you have all these other tickets currently in use, it doesn't see that. It doesn't see that as a previous state, it doesn't see that there's concurrency going on, it just sees that one collected. And it's stuck in there and so any of these other copies you use out there they're all valid, right? And I'll demonstrate that. It's really simple. It's a very simple attack. Um, you just have to look at it, and but it's very effective. Right? So under normal circumstances, if there's concurrency, other you know, multiple tickets or copies being used, you attempt to use one of them, and it's just seen one in the in the uh, used state. So it now sees it in the issued state, and it says no, that does not follow my handling rules. So none of the copies would work. Okay. But if you let it run through, right, you're not trying to just hand it back to your buddy, let it go all the way through, and every single copy then becomes valid. It doesn't see concurrency. Right? You could have three tickets, four tickets, five tickets, all the same ones. It doesn't see that. It doesn't see that they're being used right now. It just sees that one I was pre, you know, previously collected and I'm now an issued, fine, go ahead and go through. So one, two, three, five, twenty, it doesn't matter. It'll let all these people go through with the same ticket. Okay. Of course you can't just say this, you have to have some data that backs it up and we'll have a video here in just a second. All right, so we have at the top there, this is all the same ticket, right? This is an original and two copies. I have all the same good coming out of the same dispenser and at the very same instant because it, it's the same ticket. So it's got the same good and you can see it's actually used three separate times. It's very hard to make that out, right? It's very small little hex, hex letters but you can at least uh, see that it's different. So we had the same ticket being used three separate times, three separate turnstiles, actually I believe in one instance different uh, station altogether with different goods. And same thing here for these all day passes. It's actually the same all day pass. It's used two separate times in two separate stations, entered with two separate turnstiles, uh, and two separate instances of the goods. And a video. I have to get it over there though.
I had to, it's only 20 minutes. Uh, originally, it was a 45-minute talk, and there was a lot more about Thailand. Uh, this is where the research was done, obviously, in Bangkok. Uh, they are currently, they were at the time, and they're curr uh, currently still, can I get the button there? Uh, run, the country's run by a junta, right, a military dictatorship. Guys with machine guns. Uh, where, you know, uh, no questions asked. You want to be arrested? Okay, disappear. Um, so I was a bit skittish. We have a air message. I can't really see that. Let me have a few minutes. Let me go and drag this back over here. If we can't. All right, I don't know already where that's at. You guys know where this stuff's at? We're good on time, so, you know, we have, can make mistakes. He didn't bring it up, it just... If we can't play it, it's not too bad because it's most, uh, most of it's my feet. Here. Yeah. Okay, let me pause that. Yes, there's a lot of the ground in my feet. I can't see it too well. Great sandals, right? There we go. So yes, uh, at the time this research was done, ooh, I forgot about the audio. Punta is in charge, guys machine guns. So I was a little worried, I could be disappeared. Um, as a Farang, it's white man, white guy uh, in, in Thai. Lots of privileges but no rights, which means, and you combine that with Punta, yeah, it's quite easy, it would be easy for them to make me disappear. You'll see that. Here we go. That's obviously not a genuine ticket. So, there you go. As I said, that was mostly my feet because I was worried about being put in jail, disappeared. Uh, so I kept the phone by my side, as you can tell. And then, of course, when it was time right, for the money shot, I pulled it up and, and, let, and let it see that you guys could, anybody could uh, see that it was gen, gen, not a genuine ticket. It was, in fact, a counterfeit. Okay. Um, and you could run around with five of these, 10 of these, 20 of these, it really, you know, the, the system would let all of them through at that point. Okay. All right, so that was fun, right? Um, but to turn this into an exploit, right? You know, from an exploit to an attack, you have to have those blank tickets and you have to have a plan. So we actually have one more safeguard, right? Get beyond that 24 hours. So I did find someone, as I said, to make these tickets. It took a long time, many, many months uh, with vendors, talking to them, trying to get them to understand what I wanted, and then try to get them uh, past the no, we can't make it. So there are the tickets there. So the plan is buy a daily pass. You're going to copy that ticket. And you're going to go ahead and then use the original and put that in that state. And you hand out the copies and have fun. Now, you can do that yourself. You can do that with your friend and your pastor, your monk, whatever. Everyone can ride. But they're actually, it can turn into something more. Uh, you can go beyond just a couple of your friends there, you know, five of you. You can go ahead and instead make 10 or 20 or 1,000. First uh, time you run the attack, it's about three dollars for the all-day pass. You're buying your blanks for about a hundred dollars, um, so hundred five dollars to do damage to the ultimate organization of about five thousand dollars. That's the first day, but they're all-day passes. You get to keep the all-day pass. It actually you have to use it all day, right? Well, just keep it with you at the end of your day. Don't bring it back. Um, 
end of your day a little early, and so you use it again the next day. So each subsequent attack is about three dollars to do about five thousand dollars worth of damage. And you can, of course, do it a whole lot more. Uh, if you're going, uh, I hate to say cyber warfare, but if you're talking about undermining a country or start um, making the infrastructure unreliable, right, reducing trust, right, trust in these sorts of uh, things that people rely on, you could just do this uh, with a group of people. You can do this over years. You can very cheaply do a, you know, three dollars every day, right, to end up doing about eight million dollars worth of damage. You combine that with other operations, and you start looking at. Um, really hurting a company to the point where they can't make the repairs they need to make, where the, the system becomes unreliable. Um, you could do the opposite. You could turn to a PR nightmare where you decide to go out with 10,000 of these things and start handing them out. And, mean, and after that, of course, then the system shuts down because they have to stop everyone to take a look at their tickets. People can't get to work. Um, it's a huge PR nightmare to do it that way. So, yeah, a lot can be done with this. So yes, you can extend the attack beyond the, the 24 hour window. You can do a lot more damage than I think they realize you could do. Okay. So obviously to avoid their fate, test all layers of a solution. Not just hardware, d despite the fact that that's your interaction, by passing this ticket through a hardware system, it's not just hardware, there's software in there somewhere. So you're gonna have to at some point in time test for application solutions. And more importantly, check your assumptions. I suspect that many years ago when this was first implemented, the assumptions were mostly true. Mostly. Um, but things have changed. And so you have to check. That's why I think, you know, good idea, right? Do pen tests every single year. Do some sort of assessment every single year to make sure your assumptions are still valid. Yeah. And then compensating and mitigating controls. I did this on and off because I spent a lot of time in Asia. I was doing this on and off for two years, right? I think that if they were watching, if they had any sort of monitoring going on, they would have noticed. They would have found the problem, they would have resolved it. Since they didn't, they must not be doing any sort of monitoring, any sort of oversight of their own enterprise, their own system, right? And it's a very bad, bad idea. As we all know, people eventually get in, so we have to be ready in that when they do. Okay. So it's obvious that they were not using compensation and gain control, so it's important that we, as practitioners, recommend and do that so ourselves. Don't end up like them. And then links. I do, there's lots of information that you can learn about from the hardware. I uh, use the standards involved in, uh, I don't think I have with me, but uh, I do. Um, so, you know, the hardware involved, um, the different talks prior to this, that section also got cut was different talks. There's other talks, other ways to looking at the, the transit systems and attack them. Um, there is information about, our friends of the BTS, right? Um, and I say it's important to look at these sorts of things because this actually was what I got today from still using MagStripe. Lots of places are still using MagStripe. So learn about it, look at other MagStripes that are out there. And this came from, does anyone recognize it? Monorail, right? Um, I wonder what this is on this, right? You know, I, I want to look at this, right? Um, I'm tempted to, to start carting my MagStripe reader everywhere I go, um, just because you're done seeing all these things. Um, there's lots of opportunities. That is the talk. That's everything. I think I'm over early, right? Yeah. Any? Yeah.